Welcome to Coloring Report Live. I'm Bob Coleman. We're talking Main Street and the small business lenders who help it grow. Officially dog days of August. Lance Sexton out of undisclosed Arkansas. Lance, for those of you who don't know, was the former district director of the Little Rock Loan Servicing Center. How long were you there, Lance? Uh, I was at SBA about five years, Bob. Yeah, and, I mean, uh, I it, it, it was a great period. Uh, you know, I always like to tell the story of first meeting I walked in and all the supervisors <laughs> of various areas were explaining what they did and they threw so many acronyms out, Bob. I was just sitting there on my yellow pad writing them down and then I went back to my desk and figured out what they all were. Hey, Lance has had a great, um, great career. It's not like I'm giving you a eulogy. I want to be careful about that. <laughs> but uh, entrepreneur, you ran an SVDC. Yeah. Um, and currently executive vice president of a major bank in the uh, southeast. So, Lance, you've um, you've been on both sides of the table, so to speak. I have been a borrower and a lender. All right. Katie Roach, undisclosed out of Seattle. Uh, Katie, you've been with us a year now. Congratulations. It's gone fast. Uh, hey, anything uh, unusual happened in your first year that you didn't expect was going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> Well, everybody, yeah, came was talking, everybody was talking about the economy struggling, and I don't think we expected this. Yeah. <laughs> Katie graduated from University of Utah. Katie, I love your major. Tell us about your major and what that taught you. So I majored in Peace and Conflict Studies, which is kind of a combination of uh, philosophy and uh, some psychology, sociology. Uh, it's a great major for having a good idea of what's going on. Um, in a social sense, usually, and also negotiating uh, conflict and trying to come to a conclusion. We have no conflict at Coleman Publishing, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Uh, well, welcome, Katie. Uh, you're all getting situated uh, up there, so uh, give you a little. As you can see, Lance, I'm stretching in our dog days, but we have a lot of good yeah. information, so let's get to it. Let's get to our polls. Can you use funds from an overseas bank account to satisfy SBA's injection equity requirements? Bob, you keep asking interesting questions. What's the answer, Lance? Uh, you can if it's properly documented. There you go. Absolutely. As I like to say, um, Lance, I, I've been to Hong Kong. They have these things called skyscrapers, and they have these things called banks, and they have something called the Internet. And it may be Hong Kong dollars, but you can get a PDF of a checking account the same as you can in a Bank of America. Now, Bob, you asked the question, can you? Now ask me the question, have you? And Ooh. the answer is no. Really? And the answer is no. But you can, again, and you, you'll go through this on the webinar. How long does it have to be in the bank? How long do you want to see it in the bank account? Well, I think the, the standard is it needs to have been there for two months prior to equity injection. I really like 90 days, Bob, if possible, especially on an overseas account. But, but again, I'm saying I'm talking theoretically. I've never actually used overseas funds for an equity injection, Bob. Right. And I've been doing this 30-plus years. So. I love it. Number two, in general, how do your borrowers feel about the economy today? And this is your average. I, I know they are. it's all over the board. I understand that. So I'm just overall, what's, uh, what's the feeling? Ouch. 55% more pessimistic. Lance, what's your experience on the road? around the street? Uh, it's, kind of, it's kind of a mixed bag. Uh, you know, I've made an effort to reach out and talk to every customer in my portfolio, and, and, and some are very bullish on what's happening, but they're in industries that have thrived. You know, I read an article the other day, Bob, that talked about uh, the pandemic has been good uh, for some reasons. It's forced some businesses to step into the electronic world, uh, because those businesses that were already set up for online sales, already set up with apps and delivery, uh, they thrive. Uh, it's taken the businesses that wanted you to come in and bring your wallet, 
uh, those some of those types of businesses have struggled, but it's forced a lot of small businesses to take great strides uh, toward modernizing the way they sell products and services to customers. Katie, yeah, Katie, my takeaway, go, Joseph, go back to the results. My takeaway on that is when you're talking to an applicant, find out where they fill in one of these buckets. Uh, if they're optimistic, why are they optimistic? If they're pessimistic, but do they still have a plan to repay your loan? Well, I hope the plan is to repay the loan. But, uh, <laughs> it, but, but I do think a, I think a lot of it depends, Bob, on what NACE code they're in, what industry they're working in how modern they are and how they deliver products and services to customers. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, Bob. I'm, I'm housed in a Radio Shack store here, uh, one of the remaining individually owned Radio Shack, and their customers, as we do this show, I'll set, I can see the front door and customers walking back and forth, uh, has not had a negative impact on the revenue here. Yeah. Um, and I apologize. I don't know the franchise. I'm I think it's, I'm not going to think it's a fast food franchise. It was in the franchise uh, times. And their new design, Katie and Lance, is no service, no dining room tables. It's all going to be delivery. They have um, a delivery window and a couple lanes. And all the food's going to be prepared in the facility, but it's all to go. Well, Bob, I have two daughters who work at Chili's. One uh, is a bartender, which she's still doing real well. I have one daughter that works at the carryout window, where, you know, you get on your app and order. Guess who's busiest? The daughter who works the carryout window. And, Go ahead. Uh, you know, the thing is, uh, it would have been reversed nine months ago. Uh, the carryout was there, but not so active. But now... The carryout function is the most one of the most important functions in that business. Lance, did, did, this is completely off topic, but it's something I always like to add. I like to I'm just be curious. On the takeout, is she getting tipped on top of the order? Uh, how, 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 often, uh, how often is she getting tipped? Almost every carryout order. Bob. Good. She Good. Uh, her in, her income in the carryout function. Uh, I think people are are happy to be able to get the the food, uh, but she's being kept now. She said some people it's a dollar or two, but she says yeah, frequently but, she'll get a she'll get a twenty dollar tip on the carry out order. Yeah, no, that's good. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad that uh, we're taking care of our uh, of our people. Um, this one, I'm going to throw this one to Katie. We'll uh, we'll let him answer it, and then we'll we'll see. <laughs> Obviously, we Good don't know what the Katie. answer is, Good but luck. we want to know what you're thinking. What's, what's going to come out of first out of Congress? We're going to have another extension. We're going to have the stimulus deal. We're going to have PPP version. You notice we didn't, we're not talking about the post office, but uh, oh, pretty well so. What do you think about those, Katie? Uh, your guess is probably as good as mine, but I do think it looks like they're focusing mostly on the stimulus deal, which might include some... Uh, some type of PPP extension or something like that. Uh, the deal hasn't really been fully uh, written out and the way that they're going to have it in the end, but I think they're really talking about trying to pass that first. Yeah, and we're going to talk about that. Go ahead, Lance. We just want them to do something, Bob. If, if I were picking from these three, I agree with our uh, participants. I think the stimulus deal will probably come out first. PPP extension and PPP four probably will be together and may be part of the stimulus deal. But, um, you know, I think that whatever the stimulus package is should be the first thing to, to come out. Yeah, and and I, all of this, all of this is going to be adopted in some way or another. Uh, but I sort of agree with the, with the audience that stimulus is going to be number one and it's certainly needed. It's certainly needed. I, you know, we all talk to people, those uh, those uh, $600 checks mean a lot uh, for those who do not have jobs. So that's important. Finally, uh, I have this and, question. And Go ahead, Lance. I'm sorry, Bob, but the only thing I was going to say, and Katie, you chime in here. 
There's not been any disagreement on PPP extension or P4. It, it, they, they all know that that needs to be done, but it's been wrapped in with other stuff that they're disagreeing on. Right. Sausage making process. Uh, you can go crazy trying to evaluate it. But, you know, our, our job is to put it, give you some more review. Finally, and this is an uh, interesting question that I thought of. Uh, we read about commercial real estate is uh, going to be problematic. And But what's going on with housing values in your footprint? I know, Lance, you just bought a house. Uh, one of the things that's happened here is the supply wow, of housing. I did not expect that. I did not expect that. Bob, one of the things that's happened in this market is the supply of houses has dwindled. I don't know if that's from people taking off, taking their houses off the market because of the pandemic, but uh, it's caused the house market to be a seller's market with increasing prices. Wow, yeah, uh, decreasing 4% and remaining the same 23%. Uh, well, thank you for that. Hey, Katie, bring us up to date. Where are we on uh, Washington, D.C.? Well, the stimulus package got split from the House uh, USPS bill last weekend, and that happened mostly because they couldn't really come to an agreement on uh, how, how really to include both of those things. Uh, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said that she really wanted to focus on making sure that USPS bill got through, uh, so they split it and included a little bit more than what the HEROES Act included for the USPS bill. So hopefully that means on our end, uh, the HEROES Act or whatever version of it that we end up with will also include some more things than what the combined bill uh, was before. Katie, I should know this, but Congress is in session this week, yes or no? The Senate is not in session right now. They're going to be back next month. Uh, but the House has come back mainly just to vote on this USPS bill which used to be uh, including a stimulus package, but it does not anymore. This is, we're coming up, this is Labor Day weekend, right? This coming weekend? Uh, or is it next weekend? It's, they'll come it's back right now. Um, Senator Cardin is the ranking member of the Senate Small Business Committee, uh, and he came out with a statement, and go ahead, what do you say? Right, so he's saying that he's disappointed that they still have not passed another economic relief bill. Uh, he was at a town hall meeting, I forget where now, but he was saying that it's just these uh, small businesses in the area were still very much struggling and they still needed more funding. Uh, if you read my article this morning, a lot of uh, businesses just cannot make it without additional funding at this time. So he's really wanting to push for another a stimulus bill, and we've seen several uh, come and go, and they have not been passed yet, so that's why he's really starting to get concerned. What's going on with this webinar? Ask the regulators. What's, uh, tell us about that. So this is a webinar that's coming up on August 27th, so that will be later this week. Uh, it's going to be hosted by the regulators, the um, Federal Reserve System, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, uh, controller of currency and some others as well. And they're going to be answering questions mostly about uh, PPP forgiveness uh, and some other uh, smaller issues as well to try to get everybody on the same board. Um, Katie will be listening in on that, so that if you have time, she'll mm -hmm. give a little overview on Friday. Um, tell us about your reporting today. I mean, this, these statistics are scary. One in three firms may close without increased sales or additional capital. 71% uh, are service and retail, which we've talked about a lot. Um, what's um, – go ahead, Katie. It's your report. Tell us what's going on. So service, uh, retail, and manufacturers are still uh, struggling quite a bit right now through all of this. This particular – uh, study was mostly focused on the East Coast, but you're seeing this across the board, uh, maybe slightly different statistics nationwide, but uh, just about the same. I've seen maybe like one in four uh, was probably the most positive one I've seen. So one in three is probably uh, pretty much what it's going to be nationwide. Uh, you're seeing uh, 
certain businesses in these particular industries are still doing okay. I think in my article, I did focus on some of the ones that are still doing uh, better than they were before, like uh, cleaning supplies, uh, producers, things like that. Um, but overall, they're really saying that they need more sales. It's not so much that they need just uh, more funding from the government, but they need more sales. And so there, a lot of them are trying to flip what their uh, focus is, but obviously they're, they're going to need more help soon. Yeah, and I, what I appreciate about that reporting, Lance, is uh, that means Main Street, they're saying, yeah, give us a PPP and give us a little help here, but what – we're, we're not necessarily coming with hat in hand to the government to bail us out. We want to get this economy going, and we want to have increased sales, and we want to help out our footprint. That's my takeaway, I am, maybe I'm being too Pollyannish. No, I think you're right, Bob, but one of the things it also tells us is most small business owners know that these stimulus checks that go to families are a very important element in the recovery because they're able to go out and and money at small business. So, uh, you know, I think getting the stimulus bill passed, some sort of stimulus check in it for families um, or individuals and families is, is very important because they're saying, hey, guys, we don't necessarily need more free money. We just need some revenue. Yeah, yeah. We have employees and revenues, and uh, there was a lot of paperwork getting that loan and what we'd rather do is have paperwork and uh, getting more inventory, more employees and getting stuff out the door. So um, this, in order to put this in context, this situation is not going away. The, the, this, the numbers of businesses closing aren't going to go away. Uh, the aid from the government's not going to go away. And, and what we're all hanging our hat on is how quickly can this recovery happen? And, and you know, from my time at SBA, I love servicing liquidation, and I say this all the time, but, uh, you know, now is the time for your institution to shore up, get training, and be ready for servicing and liquidation, because if one in three small businesses don't make it, there's going to be a ton of SBA loans that are going to need uh, PDKs prepared, liquidation plans Prepared, litigation plans prepared. It's so important to understand how to well, take care of Well, and also understand you have a lot of uh, tools in your toolbox to help. If there's a borrower who needs help and who's willing to work with you, uh, there's a number of things you can do to keep that business open. Yeah. Absolutely, Bob. Maybe we need to roll out the workout plan webinar because it's a yeah. very important part of, yeah, of so helping the small business get back on the street. Uh, real quick, I think we've talked about this, Lance. This is very important. The reason why we're doing it, it is still, even though uh, the world has gone mad, <laughs> Inspector General still wants us to know we are documenting um, everything correctly. So that's what Lance will be doing. Uh, yeah, and we'll, we'll change it. Yeah, let's do the servicing, um, what things you should, you should be prepared for. Uh, that's interesting. <laughs> um, we have our training, uh, and a lot of you are taking advantage of our training classes, and uh, we appreciate the support. Lance is a award-winning loan closer training. Uh, we have an underwriting, and of course, his uh, loan servicing liquidation. We are waiting anx anx anxiously for the new 5010, and. Um, we, obviously, we don't have that yet, but once we, we have that, we're, we will come out with that as well. Well, very good. Uh, and, of course, you know about our other things. So, hey, uh, appreciate all the numbers. Uh, appreciate your support. And thank you for joining us today for Calm Report Live and for supporting America's Main Street, one entrepreneur at a time. Have a great afternoon.